Welcome to Actual People, a podcast hosted by me, Chauncey Zulkin, dedicated to meaningful conversations about the evolving landscape of our lives and the power of our own creativity and imagination to make magic. Today I'm talking about love songs, slow songs, ballads. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, love songs were about an almost religious devotion to a love interest. Most of the time, the guy had screwed up royally and was doing anything he could to get the girl back, but the girl, and most of us were that girl, let's face it, lapped it up. We were thrilled to learn he was lost in love and eager to be who we wanted. In the power ballad, I'll Be There For You by Bon Jovi, he admits that, well, maybe he wasn't there when the girl was happy, and he wasn't there when the girl was sad. He wasn't there on the girl's birthday, Wish he could have blown out those candles with her, but he wanted to be the air that she breathes and he would die for her. Okay. Cheating was excused by lines like, I couldn't stand to be kept away just for the day from your body. Men would proclaim things like, I'm a man who will fight for your honor. We'll live forever knowing together that we did it all for the glory of love. And I'm addicted to you, baby. And all we need is patience, even if we're living on a prayer, because at least we have love. That's Hard Habit to Break by Chicago, Patience by Guns N' Roses, and Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. It wasn't just the lyrics. The music was a symphony of crescendoing adoration. Take Will you still love me for the rest of my life? That song goes up and up. Another epic song is the song Alone by Heart, where Ann Wilson belts out that she was fine on her own before she met him, but now she's chilled to the bone by the inability to get this guy alone. And then there's Never Gonna Let You Go by Sergio Mendes, which was recorded in 1983. It was a big hit. It has been called the most complex pop song ever written. It has over 600 chord changes, and they needed all these chord changes to escalate the emotion into this apotheosis of feeling and devotion. If you are of a certain age, you remember those commercials on TV with a couple dancing in the living room with a brown carpet or a crackling log, slow dancing or cuddling in turtlenecks. But then things change. Lyrics went from, I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak, that's SWV 1992, to, to the left, to the left, everything you own in a box to the left, Beyonce 2006, in the blink of an eye. All of a sudden, there was no more cloying, crooning lyrics of a lover lying prostate at your feet. There was no more, I'd die for you, I'd lie for you, I'd walk a mile for you. In the 80s, the songs that topped the charts had names like Endless Love, Crazy For You, Cherish, Open Arms. Then the names of the songs changed. Songs were still about love, but they were also a lot more aggressively about standing your ground. We had songs like He Wasn't Man Enough For Me by Tony Braxton. We had No Scrubs by TLC. We had the song Be Careful by Sparkle with R. Kelly. Cardi B in 2018 made her own Be Careful, which was a hell of a lot more threatening than the first Be Careful. I'll get into the lyrics of Be Careful in a minute because I think they're interesting. We also had all those Destiny's Child songs like Bugaboo and Bills, Bills, Bills and Say My Name. The writer behind those songs was Candy Burris, who was in The Real Housewives of Atlanta, but she was also in the group Escape. She wrote a lot of those songs. She wrote Bills, Bills, Bills. She wrote Bugaboo and There You Go by Pink, who also had her fair share of songs that told guys to get lost. I started noticing the change in lyrics at least around 2003 because I'd started a business making little hooded sweatshirts for dogs that I personalized. And I got them into New York Magazine in the Best Bet section. And the president of Epic Records saw them and she called me into her office after I had made a dog hoodie for her dog, and she wanted me to make a bunch of hoodies for some of the artists that she worked with, including J-Lo and Diddy and the band Incubus. I took the opportunity of being in her office a few times to pitch a research report on lyrics, or really how love songs had just changed. I was already on retainer by a music marketing company, but, you know, anyway, she didn't buy it or she didn't understand why this was useful, I guess. But I remember the year because I was noticing that the lyrics... Even if they were about love, they were not so worshipful. 
a really interesting case in point is that song, Be Careful, and how it is really kind of a feminist anthem, and it's speaking to none other than the ultimate predator, R. Kelly. It went like this. Two years ago, promises is all I heard. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Because R. Kelly is about to interrupt her, and she stands her ground. She goes on to say, two years ago, promises is all I heard out your mouth. And then it gets to the R. Kelly part, which is full of toxic posturing and control, all the signatures of domestic violence, of men trying to control women. He says, two years ago, I didn't know you had male friends. Wait a minute, let me finish. Two years ago, I didn't know you had male friends off up in college. I found out you're still reaching out to some of them, Mrs. Busybody. So he's criticizing her for having friends of the same gender and for getting an education. You used to listen to me when you were down in Lost, but now you don't even respect me ever since I got laid off. Aha. So he does not feel good about himself. He has had a loss of identity because he lost his job. And so he is feeling insecure, which is making him double down on this toxic behavior. The music video ends with her leaving. She takes her her wheeling luggage and she wheels right out the door. By the time Ashanti's epic song Foolish came out in 2002, love had already become more transactional. Women held onto their hearts as best they could. Male violence was all over the music video landscape, obviously. You had your video hoes that were just objects in the background in music videos. They had no agency. They had no dimension but also female pop and R&B artists in the very romantic, very lush videos. It was normalized for the men to overpower the women, to exert power over them. It was actually part of the romance motif. In Ashanti's Foolish video, Terrence Howard, who has been accused in real life of assaulting more than one of his wives, is seen throwing a lamp at her. And it just is positioned like it's this lover's tiff that they're having. There's nothing about the video that says this is a dangerous man. Nothing in the video that positions him as an abuser. He's just a bad boy that she should probably move on from. But then there are songs like Hit Him Up Style, which came out a year earlier and had the singer Blue Cantrell going on a shopping spree. She tells us, while he was scheming, I was beaming in the beamer just beaming. Can't believe that I caught my man cheating. So I found another way to make him pay for it all. And she proceeds to shop her way through heartache in a revenge shopping spree with his credit cards. The rapper Trina in Baddest Bitch in the year 2000 destroys all of her boyfriend's belongings. And the video ends with what is ostensibly his Mercedes with a list price of $87,000 sliding into the marina with the words revenge colon priceless on the screen, which is reminiscent of the driveway fire that Angela Bassett sets in Waiting to Exhale. It's an amazing scene. You have to see it. All of these references I put into a YouTube playlist, which you can find in the show notes, plus a few extra goodies for you. My favorite song that gave me the strength in the hardest of breakups personally was not a ballad, but it was by Lil' Kim, and it was called Spread a Little Dough. And it starts with the sound of a gun cocking. And she says, calm yourself. It's just a little robbery. You got stricken with the poverty's starving me, which is a metaphor for all that women do to keep their relationships intact, overlooking bad male behavior only to be discarded or taken for granted. The trend was away from these slow, very syrupy, sweet, romantic songs to songs that are definitely about love and about strong emotion, but moving away from the blind devotion to love. The lyrics became way more critical of love and way more self-aware. Over time, we stopped romanticizing this heightened, dramatic, aggressive, and ultimately toxic behavior in lyrics. Women and men started to sing lyrics that dealt with the challenge of removing themselves from these kinds of situations and taking care of themselves. There was a lot more self-love. I realize this is not a straight timeline from devotional love to fierce independence. We had Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made for Walking. We had You're So Vain by Carly Simon. We had many, many others. There's not a clear demarcation, but the trend is clear and steady. We are no longer 
hopelessly devoted. I would say Twilight was one of the last unabashedly romantic soundtracks. And it makes sense. After all, they were immortal. Christina Perry's Thousand Years came out in 2011. The lyrics go, all along, I believed I would find you. Time has brought your heart to me. I have loved you for a thousand years and I will love you for a thousand more. I mean, there are not a lot of songs out there anymore that have that level of, you know, unbridled adoration for the other person and that kind of commitment. It just isn't common in lyrics anymore. And so, you know, let me leave you with a couple of statistics. A Pew study showed only 44% of millennials were married in 2019, compared with 53% of Gen Xers, 61% of boomers, and 81% of the silent generation at a comparable age. And more people are having divorces later in life. Every phenomenon has to have a catchy name, so this one is actually called the gray divorce. More than one in three people who divorce in the U.S. are over 50 now. In another study, 55% of Gen Z and millennials felt that friendship was more important to them than romantic relationships. And there's a research firm called Sparks and Honey, and they put out a report that Gen Z might just be that generation that breaks the paradigm of a world designed for couples and the nuclear family. They went on to talk about found families and focusing on friendships more than romantic partners. I think, you know, we're not just making these conscious decisions after parsing data of the efficacy of our choices. But that is not how it really works. We are reacting to the world. And the world is defensive, afraid, and full of distrust. Another Pew study showed a full 71% of respondents think that interpersonal confidence has worsened in the past 20 years. That seems abundantly clear to me. In 2016, the song I Hate You, I Love You came out. It's a song that feels really young and it made me feel really sad for young people. It's a duet between a boy and a girl where love has gone wrong. When the boy is speaking, he's in inner turmoil over two opposing forces. One tells him to be tough and to move on, and the other sees strength in allowing himself to have these feelings. He says, I know that I control my thoughts and I should stop reminiscing, but I learned from my dad that it's good to have feelings. The lyrics are almost rambling and frenetic, which reflects what is going on in society. One of the dilemmas in modern love is that we no longer have very clear roles, which makes me sound like a conservative, which I'm not. But because we don't have those roles and because we haven't really figured it out, and also because we're still susceptible to the roles of our parents and our grandparents, we find ourselves in a sticky place. I do believe in love everlasting. And I think a lot of other people do too. It's just that in contemporary culture, we don't like what that commitment usually entails, which is self-denial. We don't know how to negotiate love when we have big ambitions and goals, when we want to experience as much of the world as possible and to be as much of an individual as we can be. This episode would not be complete without mentioning the Grammy win for Best Song going to Flowers by Miley Cyrus. It's almost word for word a response to the Bruno Mars apology ballad that laments not buying flowers, holding the girl's hand, or giving her the hours when we had the chance. Um, and saying, you know, all you wanted to do was dance. When I originally heard those lyrics, I thought, well, why? she can dance by herself. I, it really did sound like a strange lyric. And Miley Cyrus says, I can buy myself flowers. I can write my name in the sand. I can talk to myself for hours, say things you don't understand. I can take myself dancing and I can hold my own hand. Statista says that the number of people who celebrate Valentine's Day keeps decreasing. At the same time, Galentine's Day, the Valentine's Day that was made popular in Parks and Rec, the friendship Valentine's Day is increasing in popularity. All of these barriers that are now disintegrating leave us a lot of room to explore and a lot of room to feel alienated and lost. My own personal opinion is all told that online dating has been horrible for love and horrible for the way people connect. I think the loss of spontaneous, phone-free interaction has dehumanized us. 
We know we are not commodities, and we also know real love is rare. Nobody can convince me that love is dead. We just need to find our way back to it with our new attitude towards self-care, towards a power balance that makes more sense for both people, and maybe with just a little bit of trust. Let's see what 2024 brings for us all. See you next time. You've been listening to Actual People. This show is written, directed, and executive produced by me, your host, Chauncey Zalkin. Show sound designed by Eric Aaron. Click on the link below to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And don't forget to leave a review. I'll be sharing my favorites. You can find our socials and all links to deeper dives into these topics at chaunceyzalkin.com and on my substack at chaunceyzalkin.substack.com. Actual People is available wherever you get your podcasts.